teens now spend up to nine hours of screen time a day. How harmful is social media exactly? Should I refuse to buy my kid a phone? Today we are going to talk about the influence of social media and we're going to ask ourselves, are mental disorders nowadays unavoidable? TikTok is the biggest social media app amongst teens. And there is something really disturbing trending there that has caught our eyes. It's the trend of having serious mental disorders and releasing reels about it. A reel is a short video of maximum 90 seconds with captions and music and everything designed to catch our attention. Because the way it works is that more views and clicks, the reel gets more popular and circulated and more people see it. So the crazier the video, the better. Influencers give the impression that having a mental disorder is making you someone. The disorders that are the most popular are identity disorder, borderline personality disorder, tics. Yep, tics. Tick disorder. <laughs> Tick disorder. Mm -hmm. These things weren't something, at least when I grew up, hearing about it or knowing about it. It was, it was just not that common, no. I guess. No, it really um, wasn't. So can you explain, like, you, you see that I struggle with tick, for example. What is tick? Uh, this is such a cool topic. Yeah, these uh, tick disorders are motoric, re repetitive, rhythmic movements. So you see the famous one is Tourette syndrome. So where, Oh, you have yeah, a tick. That you have ah, a tick, okay. right? Yes. So mm -hmm. it uh, can be face or it can be, yeah, it can be anything. But with Tourette syndrome is facial tick and a vocal tick. Okay. Yeah. And it's, it's not a very common common disorder but now you see it's a huge uptick in these three disorders tick disorder dissociative identity disorder and borderline personality disorder and these were disorders that were always uh, they had the prevalence rate of one to two percent okay. which is why you know it's it's really not very common Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it exists, but it's not that Yes, spread. yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then so you might have seen someone with Tourette syndrome, but it's not It's not like everyone's neighbor mm -hmm. are going around with these tics. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. now they've seen, there was this study I saw from, uh, from a college where the girls, they, they saw the prevalence rate was about 12% of these tic disorders. Oh, wow. Which is which is crazy high. That's an as common as depression. Mm -hmm. Twelve percent, and you said before like two percent. Yeah, so maximum two percent. Yeah. So th there's a huge difference. And then and then they discovered that these girls developed tics when they were watching reel after reel of tick disorders so like you said oh. yeah it's become so popular to mm -hmm. do hashtag mental disorder or um, mental awareness or hashtag tick disorders mm -hmm. and everyone's posting these videos with ticks and then they've proven now when you look at the reels with the ticks yeah. then you start developing the ticks uh -huh. So these girls have never had ticks in their lives suddenly, uh, mm -hmm. and it's it's not it's not even that it's that it's fake because like they really develop tick disorders from watching these reels. I think that um, that is one very important point you just made that you know why we do not judge those those videos or that all those videos are fake. Some people really started to develop those things, so we don't want to paint the negative picture and calling them out as like attention seeking or no. Yeah. Is that too easy? Is Absolutely. That, like this yeah, conclusion that's, too easy? That, that's my worry with this mm -hmm. is that there's already such an influx into psychiatry for all a range of disorders. Mm -hmm. And then when we have like we just we can't afford this this uptick in these mm -hmm. disorders that were previously uh, quite uncommon because mm -hmm. people already have trouble getting the help that they need. So it really just slows how we offer help to those who really suffer. Mm -hmm. And they showed that when they removed the TikTok from these girls, when they had a week of not watching the reels, doing CBT, then those ticks would go away. Okay. So the, they really could show the correlation between like, watching the reels mm -hmm. and developing these tick disorders. The, the external influence, yeah, how much exactly. effect it has on them. So, and that brings us to why why this happens, because it's like it's not fake. Mm -hmm. there, 
actually developing mental disorders because there's an element of contagiousness mm -hmm. to mental disorders that we're not aware of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the same with these others, uh, these other two disorders that have ha that have also gone up. So dissociative identity disorder is an, in a response to severe trauma. Mm -hmm. usually sexual abuse, violence that have a very evil connotation to it. The mind protects itself and you dissociate. So you just, you shut yourself off and you, you'll have amnesia. Or once I had a girl in Norway who suffered from dissociative fugue and she went out onto the ice and remembered nothing of it after just she dissociated she went out onto the lake uh, what did you do suicidal at 10 in 10 oh, so no. she was and mm -hmm. then uh, we managed to get her back and so she was on in, in the ward where I was working at then mm -hmm. it was an open ward she shouldn't have been at the open in the open ward mm -hmm. obviously mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you try to of course. as much as you can yes. so, yeah so she she got away and so, so we had police come and to get her back and then and she had no memory of it so That's that you crazy. really your mind is defense mechanism and you just and um and now dissociative identity disorder has billions of views mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yeah that makes you wonder yeah. what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I think um, with this TikTok trend or one positive side of the coin could be that people actually start talking about it a bit more. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. we have not this very negative impression what therapy is, if you have something, if you need help, that it's okay that yeah. you get help. Maybe, of course, People are overdoing it nowadays a bit, but I think the trend that this is something that is okay. Yeah. I don't even want to call it normal. It's just okay if yeah. you if you struggle that you get help. I think that is one positive side effect. Yeah, absolutely. That we don't have the stigma around mental health that there used to be. Mm -hmm. no, absolutely. And it's also, and I think some of the numbers that we're seeing might have something to do with that, that people are self-reporting more, that mm -hmm. there's a lower threshold to going to psychologists and saying, I have problems. But you see, that doesn't account for all of the people who come with self-inflicted wounds, for example, mm -hmm. to the ER for the suicide, so that we wouldn't see the increase just related to self-reported symptoms. We wouldn't see that in suicidal behavior or in self-harm. And we also wouldn't see a doubling and a tripling mm -hmm. in especially clinical depression. Yeah, you, you should go and listen to Dr. Jean Twenge. Mm -hmm. Twenge, I'm not, I'm not sure how you pronounce her name, <laughs> but she's done amazing research when it comes to teens and and social media. Mm -hmm. And she notes that from 2012, when uh, also the younger teens started, um, they, everyone had an iPhone. Suddenly, suddenly it was yes. so mandatory to yes. be on social yes. media. Yes. And then you really saw it went from uh, young girls, preteens, so we're talking 10, 10 to, to 14 year olds. They had uh, a clinical depression. 10 is right? very it's young. It's very young. It's, it's, it's really, and it, that's why this is so, so important that mm -hmm. we, that we discuss and mm -hmm. that these numbers come out that it was around 8%. And then suddenly it was in 2019 that went to, to 16%. And that, is not then those numbers you don't get from oh, we're simply going to psychologists more mm -hmm. because it wasn't mm -hmm. in 2012 it was already quite the threshold was already low mm -hmm. but it, those are for me a bit two different things one we have this trend about posting about mental disorder mm -hmm. this is one thing that we've just discussed the other thing is social media in general mm -hmm. what it does with us I mean, we we need to talk also about cyberbullying at some point because yeah. this is a real big yeah. worry that I have because I'm just imagining having kids. That will be the number one question is how do you deal with social mm -hmm. media? Yeah. And I've also heard of teachers actually spending the first hour almost each day just to talk about what happened the night really? before on social media. What? The yes. teachers? The teachers. Because they have like groups, right? Group yeah. chats or they someone gets bullied and then they go to the teacher and tell oh, yeah, to so them she and has so to like, do sort of a mm -hmm. so they they I try understand. to resolve those yeah. is it even conflicts if this of this mean behavior yeah and, and that's why you see it uh, the 
affecting girls a lot more. Mm -hmm. The rates are much higher for girls because it really feeds into how girls bully each other. How do so, they do that? <clears throat> what what so, is the difference? So the, the actually, women are, girls are not less aggressive than men and boys. Okay. It's just boys resolve their aggression with physical violence mm -hmm. and girls destroy each other's reputations. Oh, and that, they that sounds mean. Yeah. yeah. And we do uh, freezing out, exclusion. Mm -hmm. It's all about, are you part of the group or are you not? Mm -hmm. and, and that's why you also see once the once Facebook uh, added the like button and the share yeah. button, that affected girls very negatively. Because then you, you get that that dopamine kick. Oh, someone's mm -hmm. oh, someone's approving, someone's liking. I'm in. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and it doesn't have quite the same effect on boys. Uh, with boys, you have to talk about gaming and addiction and porn. That mm -hmm. has had a huge effect on them. We will but have just, an episode on that. Exactly, right? but just this <laughs> social media is yes. especially harmful for girls. Also, because mm -hmm. I mean, uh, and we talked about this. I was bullied as a kid, yeah. but at least I had a safe home to go home to. Mm -hmm. So after school, it was a cut, it's a break until the next day. Yes. yes. So you had a chance mm -hmm. and now it's 24-7. Mm -hmm. It's constant. That is horrible. What I've also heard, the meanest thing that you could do, what they did in school, is basically they changed the Facebook settings for the other people when they didn't log off. What? That, wait, the settings... <sighs> You could say maybe they post something dirty in in their names. No, no, they didn't. They didn't do that. They changed the settings that when they post something that no one sees it, mm. so you get no reaction. What? Isn't that crazy? terrible? It's terrible. But but I'm sure it works. I'm yes, sure it works. of course. Oh, this is not an advice, guys. <laughs> but how would they change the? Like, set out? Would they steal the phone? And no, no, no. You know, well. you you have computer classes in school, and then you would go onto Facebook, and sometimes you forget to log off. You always yeah, need okay. to log off, um, to, oh. to sign out, oh, sorry, to sign out, yes. Mm. And and of course, this ties into what you just said is then you don't get this reaction mm. because yeah. you're collect and, and I mean, for me, even like I didn't grow up with Instagram, right? It came. Mm. It came way later. Way I later. got it two weeks ago. <laughs> you know, I've read, I've read, <laughs> okay, wow. <well. laughs> I've read, I've read a statement um, that we are older than Google. Okay. <laughs> It's like you need to. Said, I told my kid I'm older than Google, <laughs> and the kid wouldn't believe it. So yes, we are older. I think yeah. Google was 1998. So if you are older than that, well, yeah, you're older no, so than that's Google. what Dr. Twenge. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna call her that. She wrote a book about the I Gen. She calls her that because that generational shift is that they they grew up with mm -hmm. with the with the iPhone with the iPhone, and you oh, really okay. see a difference because they always uh, argue right about when is exactly who are the millennials who yes. are the gen z or gen or mm -hmm. i gen it's mm -hmm. the same mm -hmm. and then no one's really in agreement about where the mm -hmm. line is but yeah. geez, uh, this is the generation that grew up with social media and they mm -hmm. are they're much safer because they don't do anything yeah and they just you know they they're on their phone a lot so yeah they're less car accidents and mm -hmm. they're much safer mm -hmm. physically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but because they don't meet each other <laughs> so it's just like super safe in your bedroom with your with your, with your with your TikTok, and maybe and, you have more yeah. psychological disorders. But they then. have more of yeah. all the d mental disorders. Mm -hmm. And I, I think parents need to be aware of the social contagion effect mm -hmm. and how mental disorders through history have been going up and down and up and down. So this um, dissociative identity disorder, that was multiple personality disorder. So it's renamed. Okay. This is, mm -hmm. And that has been going up and down. Like we have, um, and there's a correlation between it being portrayed in pop culture mm -hmm. and it showing up on the map. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have that movie Split. The movie you know, Split. I don't the, know. Yeah, there was a, a movie about it, and you really see more people showing up than with multiple, multiple personality disorder okay. when there's something famous happening around a mental disorder. So this mm -hmm. is the same with suicides, mm -hmm. which is why I think it's so bad that we make shows like 13 Reasons Why mm -hmm. about suicide and put that out there. Yeah. And there was in the. Do you then normalize it? Or what, why do you yeah, think because it is so it dangerous? Really is, it, it really is contagious. And we've showed that if you have a neighbor who's happy, yes, you're 25% likelier to be happy. Uh, and there was this Hungarian suicide song, Gloomy Sunday. Have you heard about that in the 30s? 
that no. just you listen to it and it spiked like it's it's been it's been related to like a hundred suicides just because of this one song What? i mean it's an urban legend but you see this again and again that suicide and, and pop culture spikes the suicide rate that, that is crazy yeah so mm -hmm. this is And so we mimic each other's emotions. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole body of literature on that, of, of research, showing how we, we take from each other. So really, it's contagious. Mm -hmm. And this is what's happening. It's not that kids are faking it. So to some you extent, to, you maybe. Need, you need to surround yourself with happy people then. Yeah. That there's something to that. Interesting. That, mm -hmm. um, that you you're you're likelier to have symptoms of depression when, when people around you are but that's like because I, i would understand that right when you say you have happy people around you it makes you happier in general because they will highlight the positive side of things so you are more able to see that as well so that will that will feel logic to me when you that think feels about it it's, it's yeah it, mm -hmm. however now i think of social media everybody putting their best selves out there right yeah. you see all those posts of like come on guys how can you travel each weekend to italy how is this even <laughs> possible but but people can like according to instagram it is possible or mexico from switzerland it's a long flight huh? but well, you, uh, sure? they you can mexico. get whichever background you want yes but, so but you, you don't know but, <laughs> we don't know but you know what i mean everybody has like the perfect relationship Yeah. Um everybody looks always so well. They mm -hmm. are with the beautiful like, with the filters, yeah. with the outfits. They yeah. need to spend a fortune on those outfits. Like all the things. Um so then when I would see that constantly, I think it makes people more depressed because they live in reality mm. and they then cannot actually judge if this, if this is real it or not. It messes with your expectations. Right? And so your self-perception. Yeah. Self-perception, mm -hmm. right? You think you're then not good enough. Yeah. The yeah I saw this back. study that you're every time you go on Facebook and afterwards you feel 5% worse about yourself. I don't know how, exactly how they worded it, but it was it was 5% like lower self-esteem or something something like that crazy stuff. Yeah, that but when, when we say yeah, but when you say we should be surrounded by people that are happy. Yeah. Shouldn't this also have then a positive effect on us? I don't know. Because then you see only positive sides of people. Yeah, but you compare. Okay. Yes. So I compare my life then immediately or automatically yeah. with their life. Now that has a negative effect on you. So that's mm -hmm. one thing when I've, you know, started to be on social media. Mm -hmm. I kind of liked it because I could connect with people that um, live further away and before social yeah, media social that was, media definitely has positive sides yeah, yeah that was not like i have um a host family in the us so mm -hmm. of course i connected with them then on facebook and we shared pictures and stuff like that was um that was um a very nice experience however even though i didn't want it to get to me each time i post something i will check the likes I think mm -hmm. everybody does that. Yeah. And then you see this person likes it or this people, uh, this person has seen it, but doesn't like it. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can imagine like, but we, we were adults already when mm -hmm. we, when we got social media, mm -hmm. I was in university. Oh, I think I got it. Before. Yeah. I think I got it before. Yeah. Facebook. You, only Facebook. You're, you're yeah. a little bit more trendy than I am. <laughs> no, actually <laughs> my best friend, she made me a Facebook profile. I was okay. like, here. There, you this is do. what we're doing now okay yeah but i studied abroad so that was really a way to connect mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. now it's to connect what's going on with people in norway so i, I don't think that it's all bad yeah. but i'm really the, these are teens and when you're a teen your drive is to belong mm -hmm. so you always you're searching for your identity and identity doesn't develop in a vacuum mm -hmm. your identity is really directly related to to what you're doing and who you're surrounded with mm -hmm. so that's why you 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 feel like oh, you're a different person when you're with this group of people and then you sort of you change when you're with another group of people mm -hmm, somehow mm -hmm, it de mm -hmm. depends on how how on your on your personality if you how open to experience you are people who are very open to experience feel that they're different people oh really yeah so they, like, they change oh, a bit like more. this yeah because they're uh, they're more dynamic they're more okay. so like, it's not, they're it's much not a, more creative and spontaneous so they're it's like not a this. bad thing yeah no no okay. and then they're like that and other you know us more rigid people were <laughs> we have experienced that less okay. okay but um but yeah so teens are extreme and teen girls are really exposed to this mm -hmm. they're very vulnerable yeah and yeah. we'll do anything to to try to fit in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah Even i still i still i still remember that time right it was not nice 
Right. No, Imagine if no. we had uh, social media. So we have to protect our kids mm -hmm. from this. And the, the question is just how exactly. how can we possibly do that? Yeah. Because if they don't get the social media accounts, then they're also then they're definitely excluded. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. that's what they do. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm, I'm I'm arguing for these for activities with phone free time mm -hmm. just because they don't see each other face to face that much. And I was thinking about that the other day. Maybe it would even be better to say, okay, you're allowed TikTok, but when you're with each other, at least they can sit next to each other on their TikTok accounts, yeah. and yeah. at least they'll then be showing each other, oh, this is cool, and and mm -hmm. do you like this? And at least there'd be some kind of interactions that okay, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna go out with my friends. I'm gonna sit in my room with the social media account. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the worst. But now when you're parenting, whenever you're telling them something they don't want to hear, mm -hmm. uh, or trying to guide them. They'll just go into their room and they'll have immediate affirmation of whatever stupid idea oh, they're then, having. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then they go, no, no, I'm perfectly all right. No, no, of course I have a mental disorder. And they, if you're a parent, then you're trying to sort of drag them out of whatever they're in mm -hmm. and uh, present an alternative way of thinking or to look at it or, you know, to try to influence their per perception a little bit, as you, you have to do. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, they're like, no, and they can go and, and look at whatever they want and get whatever affirmation they want mm -hmm. right there in their chosen group if and they my get problem, the affirmation yeah but my pro you can find it on tiktok on instagram mm -hmm. you can find whichever group you choose and then have you know if you if you are already sort of an an outcast mm -hmm. in your immediate environment then you go to instagram and you find people that that fit and you say oh no i could have a mental disorder and yes. then like, yeah you know this uh, this resonates with me a borderline personality disorder i i have a different difficult time oh, with my God, identity now, yeah now and when then, you mention that i would have fallen for that so easily mm -hmm. because i had so many moments where i would run into my room close the door and just thought something must be wrong with me yeah because, because nobody really understands me. as a teen yeah no one understands a teenage girl oh. <laughs> every teenage girl think oh, i'm not like anyone else no one understands me definitely mm -hmm. not my mother definitely, i'm alone yeah. in the world Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, all these, you know, why me? Yeah. Like, and then you go and you find exactly that group that resonates with your mood at that time. Mm -hmm. And instead of being pulled out of it by a loving parent, you're you're pulled further into the deep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's not very uplifting. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> I have a problem with the, with all this mental awareness that you have like mental health awareness and 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 mental disorder awareness you have every have you seen all the suicide uh helplines when you at the, at the bus stops yes and then all the celebrities were going out and saying they have this that and the other mm -hmm. disorder and mm -hmm. talking about them giving interviews that one just circling back very quickly to the social contagion exactly. effect of mental disorders. Mm -hmm. I have a problem every time I see that. I think it's easy enough nowadays mm -hmm. to find a phone number online, to find, to go to the nearest hospital, whatever, to get the help that you need. It's easy enough. We don't have to see uh, these ad, these campaigns. All the time. All the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so they, we have to make it easier and easier. I think at some point we have to say, okay, there's also this thing about it being contagious contagious mm -hmm. that we have to balance find a balance between decreasing stigmatization mm -hmm. like you said mm -hmm. before yeah that it's easy for people to say i'm suffering i need help mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to give people this feeling okay so many are having mental disorders so it's likely that you have one too yes yes right yes don't you want to belong to this group mm -hmm. if you feel like you're an outcast in your current environment Come and join us, everyone. Everyone's welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would have total fallen for that. I'm so sure. Yeah. <laughs> I would have been an easy target. Yeah. Easy. But I see more and more now um, parents who are making groups and saying we don't want more screens in the yes. school. Mm -hmm. And I, so I think that's a little bit on the rise, which is why I really wanted to do an episode on this, saying that the numbers are out. Go and check out. Also, Jonathan Haidt, mm -hmm. Jean Twenge, mm -hmm. and see who's, who's Jonathan Haidt. He's also he's a social psychologist, okay. and I work. To, he's he's also amazing on this. Um, so we have the data. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt. Yeah, yeah, that this is very very damaging to your kids. Yeah.
So great. But Happy not, Sunday. Exactly. But not only for kids, huh? Yes, for kids, it's even more. Yeah. But, but, but yeah. Um, I mean, there was this great, I'm advertising a Netflix show, but there was this great movie about social media. I can't recall the name yeah, and how it actually works. Like that you um. are basically the product. Yeah, no, but you have yeah. teams yeah. of psychologists who, 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 yeah. who are developing how to really, how to get people hooked on how to. Exactly. But yeah. yeah. I mean, I started TikTok this morning. I think, I don't know. How, I was like, this is. And I feel you thought it. This not, is amazing. I did it? that. It, it yeah. has like these. It's the algorithm is yeah. is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's a great way to get your stuff out there. Mm -hmm. But you won't stop. Yeah. You'll just check and check and okay, I will check and check and check and yeah. check. Yeah, it's um, going crazy. I can watch panda videos for hours. <laughs> and now it's out there. <laughs> panda videos or puppy videos. For hours, I swear. Okay. Before I go to sleep, I need to to put the phone. Oh, by the way, yes. Having the phone next to you while you're sleeping, probably not the best idea. Yeah, that's yeah. that's in the, the... So what she also showed was that kids, teens sleep a lot less mm -hmm. uh, than they used to and a lot less than and they, they should. And they need sleep. They yes. need sleep, right? No, because one of, the of their reasons. body is developing and they need energy. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. and to 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 focus. On it. So, but they they sleep with the phone in the room, mm -hmm. uh, as do so many adults. Yeah, and, and because <laughs> that was funny, she said because they they need the alarm clock, mm -hmm. and then you know, she tell them, yeah, just buy an alarm clock. It's like five francs or something. Yeah. Old school. You don't have to. But yeah, I think mm -hmm. so many of us make that mistake. I do too. Yeah. Yeah. Confession. Yeah, confession today. Are we already talking about what should we tell our daughters? Is that already the segment? Yeah. <laughs> Or do you have another advice? For I don't me, have one thing advice. we haven't mentioned is I would actually have loads of conversations about the content they post themselves. Mm -hmm. A, to give awareness, like everybody can see that. I would check the privacy settings that only their friends group see it. Yeah. And they don't have a, a public um, profile. But actually... That is also very hard to remove something that you've posted once. Mm -hmm. And I think that is something I've constantly heard from my parents is like, listen, you can use it, but be careful. As soon as you post a picture, everyone can save it. It's like, mm -hmm. then it's out there. Yeah, then yeah. it's public. And I no. think nowadays there are really great apps where you could screen like, what are they looking at? How long of their time are they spending on TikTok, on Facebook? And I think such things you need to use. I also think it is important. Um, one advice you gave in a past episode was actually become a stalker. And I think that is actually a good advice. Yeah. They become a stalker. Yeah. Because, because you can, of course, not only on social media, but when you are in the same room with the kids and you hear what they are actually talking about, how they use social media, I wouldn't forbid it, but it's like you can just check like what kind of videos are they looking at what kind of videos are they recording yeah, i don't know posting. if there are p parental controls that will show you which groups and which hashtags they go they oh, follow probably and exactly which mm -hmm. because it's so fast tack, 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 mm -hmm. tack. and uh, I, i'm i'm not sure but that would be that would be interesting mm -hmm. but i but yeah to get there there is more awareness around the damage social social media use mm -hmm. more and i hope When Eliana is older, that there's even more. Yeah. But what I what I wish that there will be, I, I hope there will be a age that they that can really oh yes control they, they the are, age they are discussing limit that, right again yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that because that is something that they could regulate. I'm not for you know government regulation, but just to make absolutely sure that they're whatever mm -hmm. age, I mean, 16, that you don't have your 10-year-old girl sitting and sort of watching suicide videos or mm -hmm. people who are having tics and then developing tics. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would that would be really good. Yeah. Oh. Good. Okay, good. I think. Thank you for listening. No. What? what? <laughs> no, <I'm> Hannah. <sorry. laughs> oh, God. <laughs> She tried. She tried. No, no, no. There is asking for a friend, Hannah. <laughs> Okay, so I'm sweating. <clears throat> in many movies and TV shows, they actually tell stories about someone seeing a psychiatrist for help. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden there is there this attraction. Maybe they start having an affair. And in the <laughs> movies, they probably get married. What are you watching? Well, you've never seen this. I think <laughs> it's all How I Met Your Mother, Robin fell in love with her psychiatrist 
and they then really yes oh uh, and then they were a couple for for um a few months it it, it didn't last okay um spoiler alert mm-hmm. um but um so my question to you is is that a thing um does that really happen because you will meet people opening up to you completely mm-hmm. so is that something psychiatrist needs to pay attention that they don't start to develop feelings for their patients absolutely yeah yeah there's this it's the phenomenal transference it's a term that Freud first coined and he called it transference love and the Freudians think that it stems from a relationship in your past for example you had inappropriate fantasies or thoughts about your father and then when you encounter a a male therapist older reminds you of your father then those feelings those inappropriate feelings will be transposed onto the therapist so the solution to that is to go into your past and find that relationship and resolve it there. But it's it's also commonly referred to as having feelings or thoughts about your therapist. And I understand, like think about it, you have, uh, you're in the most vulnerable period in your life, you're sick, it's probably the worst you've ever felt, and you're lonely. And then once a week, you have someone there, stable, safe, uh, who's looking you in the eyes for an hour and caring about you. And yeah, I think it's natural then that that awakens other feelings and that you get mixed up and you don't know anything about the therapist. So, so you can also make that person into whatever, whatever it is that you need at that moment. So you are putting everything out there and there he knows when you had sex last and you probably don't know if he's gay or straight. Mm-hmm. So it's it's in that sense, even though, you know, we try to make the relationship you know between equals, egalitarian and all that, it it it's always very unbalanced. So that's why we're very careful about boundaries. But I've mm-hmm. found that it's it, it's helpful to disclose some things. It always also makes the other person a little bit more comfortable. But I found that this happened less frequently if I did mention my husband in a positive context or something like that, just so that you know they knew that I was unavailable. Mm-hmm. But on the other hand, some people do do have the, a tendency to fall for people who are unavailable. So there's also a section of those patients who will fall in love with a therapist simply because they are unavailable so that so that wouldn't help <laughs> in those situations so what you have to do is like i said and you know it it's happened to me a couple of times that i noticed that they're having that that they're having certain thoughts in the way that they try to insert themselves in my life how do so, they do that um, they try to figure out what i'm doing on the weekend if i like this or that and staying after trying or trying to stay after this session yeah yeah yeah. You. yeah yeah being resistant and and starting the session not wanting to really focus and when they close themselves off like really you notice resistance to the therapy and uh, you have to address that mm-hmm. but you know because putting yourself in in the patient's shoes if you have a crush on someone then you won't tell you won't be completely upfront with them about everything there are things that you wouldn't tell someone you're crushing on yes imagine you know if i have a male client he's not going to and he's crushing on me he's not going to tell me about his uh, erection problems or his his diminished libido mm-hmm. or th- this disgusting habits he uh, he have he has in the bedroom which is why he can't keep a girlfriend and if if you have a male therapist you're not gonna you're not gonna tell him about the the pimples that broke out on your back <laughs> due to the due to the medication he's giving you right that's not something you're gonna you're gonna tell him so no matter sc- what school of thought you have in therapy if you're freudian or you practice cbt or you're behaviorist whichever the most important tool in therapy is truth and the different therapy techniques they're they're just different tools to get to the truth and a crush or inappropriate thought can really thoughts can really get in in the way of that so that's why it's so important to resolve 
Mm-hmm. Um, I've heard, so, so I've had those very light cases of, uh, of flirtation, which didn't go so far that I had to address it in a, in a big way. But my father-in-law is a prominent forensic psychiatrist, British. He had an extreme case once where a female patient called him on his wedding day and threatened to commit suicide because oh, really? she wanted him. I don't remember what he told me, how that, how that was resolved. He got married. So good, thankfully. But that's one of those extreme cases that I've heard of. But in my circle of of colleagues uh, where I've worked, that's not something that's happened to uh, mm-hmm. to to a large degree. Or I've, I've never met anyone who's had uh, relationships with their patients. You never so had you... a friend who then ended up with their patient. No, I never saw that. I never saw that happening. By the way, Hannah mm-hmm. is married. <laughs> <laughs> and and her, and her husband was never her patient. No, <laughs> I haven't heard any any concrete examples. So like also in, in none of the groups that I that have been in or any colleagues, they're so careful nowadays, and we have such strict guidelines. And if anything comes up, you are very quickly advised to transfer the patient onto another. Th- okay, to, so to it's another not like how I met your mother. Okay, it's it's really and that's extremely unethical. Yeah, I'm glad we clarified that. (laughs) Is there something you want to tell us? No, no, (laughs) you are my psychiatrist, so. (laughs) Cool. That was it. That was it for today. Happy Sunday. Thanks for listening. See you on Instagram.